Sports can bring out the best in people. Teamwork, sportsmanship, and determination. And it can bring out the worst. Out of control coaches, dirty play, and a win at all cost mentality. The kid just wants to go out there and play and have fun. So what are we exposing our youngest athletes to? Just hold it, hold it. Hold it. Next on this Box 9 Community Connection Special, we explore the culture of youth sports. And hello everyone, thank you for joining us. I'm Kelsey Carlson. Athletics are a big part of our lives. Even spectating is a sport. In the next half hour, we'll look at youth sports in particular. Kids have opportunities they didn't have 20 or 30 years ago, but with that comes more pressure to be better, sooner. We begin by talking to parents about what their experience is like. Kids and sports. For the most part, I, I would yeah. say it's good. It's good for the kids. I think they help them out. Like I said, it helps them out a lot. It keeps them active. No hands, no hands. Sports are basically what they've always been. Go. The foot, off loose foot. I think the good things are the camaraderie that the kids have with each other. My son has always had fantastic coaches, great teammates, great parents. And I'm of the old school where it does take a village to raise a kid. Three. But in today's world, there are more chances to play. Ten years ago, the, the, the level of access to basketball wasn't this great. And that can put parents and kids in a tough spot. I think now there's pressure to do sports year round. Where there wasn't, I think when you and I were growing up, we maybe did one sport a season. I think it's a lot of pressure on the kids to specialize much earlier. The level of the game has changed. Good luck. Good D. The leagues are so competitive. The skills and the fundamentals of the kids are so much more advanced. Kids are bigger now, faster, stronger from when back when we played. And that can lead to intensity in the stands. Go to it. Go to it. Parents, coaches, you'll get the, the gamete of them. You'll get the ones who never say a word to the ones who are part-time officials themselves. Uh, Parents can give pressure. Um, they will push. They will push kids um, their own. They're usually the hardest on their own. A lot of times it's usually probably seventh, eighth grade when the kids are entering into middle school or going into high school. You'll see the competitive play um, ramp up and it's the intensity. Try to control yourself, be composed, you're good, you're okay. And if you want your kids to get all the good things that sports have to offer, there's the pressure for everybody to keep up. That's really where everybody has to kind of take a step back and, and understand that it's still youth sports. Um, Everybody's going to go home at the end of the day and hopefully go back to school and go back to their lives. And there's no the next LeBron James or Michael Jordans usually uh, running up and down the basketball court. And we talked with former Minnesota Twins player Corey Kosky about the shift in youth sports. As a former player and the father of four boys, he has an interesting perspective. For one, he says the two things that kids need to get better are heart and passion and he worries about the trend in sports. So we're here with Corey Kosky, former Twins third baseman and uh, current dad and all around good guy. So as a former professional baseball player, you had a lot of coaches in your time. And what things made a difference, I think, in your playing career? If, when you look back, what did coaches do that inspired you and motivated you? Uh, as far as, as the youth coaches, um, basically not screwing me up. I came from a generation in which you got out and you played a lot of games and you just played, you had fun, you enjoyed it. As a dad now, watching your kids play hockey and other sports, are you, are you worried about the culture of youth sports? Yes, uh, the, and the part that worries me is the fact that we've taken the play out of the game. We've, everything is about development. Have you ever struggled with that as a dad? Yeah. Knowing, you know, what, because you played at such a high level, knowing what it takes to be a better player, but then also sitting back and just letting your kids enjoy it? No, uh, because, you know, the skill, their skill level is, is, is so low at what it needs to be to where they need to get to. So I've kind of, uh, you know, a long time, you know, realized that they look, they're, it's, they're just not that good and let's just enjoy it because they have a long way to go and let's enjoy the process. 
so you know, I made my mistakes very early on, uh, but I was, you know, I turned that corner pretty quick. So I'm kind of step back and let them let them enjoy it. Sports gives parents the opportunity to feel good about themselves. So I could walk into a hockey rink on a baseball field or whatever, and I can probably within a five percent error tell you which kids had a really good game just by the way the parents are holding themselves. We're just robbing the kids. We're robbing them of their their. Uh, the enjoyment of a game. You know, there's a lot of money wrapped up in youth sports too. And if you don't have a successful program, people aren't going to want to necessarily join it. I mean, is that one of the risks? And what what's driving a lot of this? Everybody knows the lip service of what to say. So you walk into a youth 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 environment, and you go into this organization. Every organization is the same, and they say, "Here's the stuff we want to do, and this is the stuff why we do it for the kids." It's all about the kids. Well, look behind me. Every banner you see is, the, is a state champion or winner. So as a coach, as a parent, you say, well, okay, that's great. That's great, yeah, yeah, I can do that. But the only time I get recognized is when I win. So that really is the message that we're sending, the, the subliminal message that we're sending to all our coaches. So what is the answer? Do we need to work on the parents? Do we need to work on the coaches? Do we need to work on the kids? Well, the, the, coaches, the coaches set the culture. The coaches, my, uh, I see it all the time. The coaches sent the culture for their organization. Their organization is their team. The coaches really need to understand the fact that they are the culture setter for the team. So if they have a win at all cost uh, mentality and it's all about winning, you're going to have a lot of miserable parents because if you don't win, there's only one success and that's winning and winning a, a state championship and there's only one winner of a state championship every year. So you're going to fail. So you're setting yourself up to failure versus setting a culture of growth setting a, a culture of character building, well, there's a lot of wins within there. In your lifetime, do you think the priorities will change in that regard? Um, they will change if there's a financial reason for them to change. Corey Kosky believes the coaches set the tone and there's a nonprofit that works specifically with coaches. Well, we stopped as a culture and that society in general are valuing participation. Now the only thing that we want to look at and we value is excellence. We'll take you to a clinic that's all about coaching the coaches to motivate and inspire athletes. That's coming up when this Fox 9 Community Connection returns. Welcome back to this Fox 9 Community Connection special. According to a Sports and Health in America poll, one in four parents hopes that their kids will play professional sports. In reality, not even 1% of kids will actually go on to play professionally. A nationwide nonprofit is trying to get parents and coaches to embrace everything else that sports has to offer so that kids will keep playing. When kids brawl, when parents get upset, or when players go after officials, sports are not allowed to be all that they can be. The character building, sportsmanship, teamwork, they aren't taught, they aren't learned. Just from my own personal experience, some of the most important people and role models in my life were coaches. And so it can be a huge influence, obviously, like teachers and parents, but a lot of times a coach can kind of get to a kid in a different level. In two hands, pull it back. Mike Terwilliger nice. is a former college hockey player turned dad who coaches his own kids now. Did you bring your water bottle up? Okay, all right. His you coaches knew how to motivate, not humiliate. The guy I played for in college, Joe Marsh, um, was intense and wanted to win, and that, but at the same time, he still, I think, kept priorities in order and still taught us life lessons and was honest and fair and kind and, and everything that you'd want. That's why he's glad coaches in his league in Eden Prairie go through training with the Positive Coaching Alliance, which trains coaches on ways to keep it positive. But really, the only way to make a mistake is to compound it again. The PCA is a national nonprofit with 14 chapters, including one in Minnesota. Sports, they believe, should be about life skills. Kids staying in sports overall, we find that they really do well in the real world, that companies want to hire these kids that have gone on and had multiple coaches and been in an arena where they are competitive and learning how to balance a schedule and keeping the basic life skills at the forefront of coaching. Katie Hahnemann is a former college golfer and coach. And she says the win at all cost mentality not only sends a bad message, it prompts a lot of kids to drop out of sports. Right now we're seeing close to 80% of kids dropping out before the age of 13. And one of the biggest goals is teaching kids how to deal with 
and overcome a mistake. We're able to get the kid to bounce back quicker and, and, and do a good job the rest of the game where you know he may have folded before. Life's about mistakes and how you bounce back from them. So. And we talked with PCA trainer Katie Hahnemann about how to keep kids competitive without turning them away from competitive play. So we have Katie Hahnemann here with us from the Positive Coaching Alliance. You're a trainer. Essentially, you train coaches how to coach kids right. and deal with parents a little bit too. Right, and we train parents as well. And you played golf in college yeah. and you coached at the U of M. So you've had a lot of experience on both sides. Right, and I'm a mom of two small kids, so I'm experiencing it from that angle too. So kind of... You know, it's human nature, I think. We do look at what's wrong sometimes with a situation before we look at what's right. But 30, 40 years ago, kids were not exposed to as much when it comes to sports. They didn't have as many opportunities, especially out in the rural outlying areas. So let's start first by saying, you know, what is good about youth sports today? Oh, I like to refer to it as the test kitchen of life. I mean, I think it gives kids the experience in every different avenue of dealing with different people, um, having conflict, learning how to resolve issues. Where's that line though? Because you hear that you hear a lot of people in, in our age group now saying, you know, we can't just give everybody a participation ribbon because they need to learn to lose and they need to learn that competitive fire. So where is that line between pushing enough and pushing too much? From my standpoint as a parent that I want every time those kids head out in that field or onto the court or onto the ice that I want them in pursuit of victory. I want them to want to win and to give it everything they have because winning is important. And we know as a culture and a society that being a competitive person, it's necessity. It's something we have to learn how to do, but it's not something that at seven and eight that they're able to understand. And the majority of the time, the kids will tell us that their worst experience from playing youth sports is the car ride home from games with parents. Having been an athlete, a coach at the college level, and then having kids of your own, what are some of the things that concern you about youth sports today? Well, I think the decline in numbers and just what that, what that is showing us across the board, not just in Minnesota, but in our country right now. Uh, they tell us right now that the percentage of kids that are experiencing difficulty and not wanting to compete and play is extremely high. And right now about 70 to 80 percent of kids are dropping out between the ages of 10 and 13. When I grew up you played seasonal things. You know, we had that chance to stop playing one sport and enter another because winter stopped and you know, spring and the sunshine came out and now that doesn't seem to happen. You know, the kids are playing year round and the pressure is to if they're not playing year round, that they don't have a spot to compete when the season comes around. How do the coaches maintain order with the parents? Because sometimes you're dealing with a coach that is 10, 15 years younger than some of the parents, and that's intimidating, especially if you have former hockey players that are among the parents. It's hard, and we do say, and I, something I tend to find helpful, and just from my experience, it's beneficial to have that parent meeting at the beginning of the year. And these are my expectations and lay it on the table. I'm going to make mistakes because we all make mistakes as coaches are going to make mistakes. They're going to play the wrong kid. They're going to say the wrong thing. And what do you find that what works and what doesn't? I think kids and what we find the most, it's positive motivation. The screaming and the yelling and the swearing and the hammerheading on and beating it into them doesn't work, that they tend to shy away. It's that confidence and magical things happen when kids feel you believe in them. And you can look for leagues that partner with the PCA. Also, Lifetime Fitness offers rec programs that embody those values as well. Coming up, a former Marine found himself again by joining a college football team in his late 20s. And, and football gave you a little bit of structure? Gave me a ton of structure, which is probably what I needed to get my head on straight. How football helped Hank Goff in his return to civilian life next. Last fall, Concordia University defensive lineman Hank Goff received a Disney Spirit Award for his resilience in overcoming post-traumatic stress after his time in Afghanistan. He's living proof of what sports can do for the soul. Sitting here with Hank Goff, and you're a regular guy with a pretty incredible story. And I think you have a message that anybody um, can receive and learn something from, but especially kids who are starting out in sports and trying to figure out what it's all about. Absolutely. So tell me a little bit about yourself. You went to South Dakota State, what happened? Uh, I went to South Dakota State and I had a lot of fun off the field and out of the classroom. So I didn't really take care of the academic side of school. 
I was quickly asked, you know, maybe this wasn't the best fit. Maybe you should look for another school. Now, and you joined the Marine Corps. You, you went a completely different direction. I went out and did the hardest thing I could think of after, and I joined uh, the infantry. Did my 40 years active duty, and then I got out in 2011. And by 2013, I was playing football again at Concordia, St. Paul. And, pretty, and you were in Afghanistan, so yep. um, you saw a lot in, in your time in the Marines. My unit was the first unit in Afghanistan, like the area we were for the Marines since 01. So we got hit pretty heavy, you know, where they had 1,000 guys nowadays, we had 40. So it was a little, it was a little different. Than, and scary. It was scary, you know. Your training kind of blocks that part out. You don't. You can't think about it to be scary or you'll just, you'll just eat yourself alive, so, you know. And you came back and you decided to go back to college and jump back on the football field. So you were at 28 when you decided to play football again? 26. 26, 26 okay. So. <laughs> a little bit younger. A little younger. Uh, yeah, I was having a hard time. It was a hard transition period when I got home. A lot of guys weren't ready to be back in civilian life. And I just needed to be part of the team again, so I decided, you know, I think I'm going to go play football. I know it will bring, you know, stability to my life. I'll be part of the team, and that's exactly what I did. And it helped me get through school because, you know, I'm not the best student. And, and football gave you a little bit of structure? It gave me a ton of structure, which is probably what I needed to get my head on straight. Had sports always been part of your life? Absolutely. Since I was little, you know, I played every sport I could, even if I wasn't good at it, and pretty much – all the way through high school, through college, and even nowadays, you know, I still go to every single one of my brother's games and all that stuff. So, not everybody's going to be able to play at the college level, but what what is it about sports that you think made you a better person and 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 can be a good part of anybody's life? Sports teach you how to work with other people. If you can't, you know, if you're working with a group of people and you can't get on the same team and push for the same objective, you're not going to be able to do anything, and that's. If you can't work with people, you're not going to get very far in life. So uh, moving on now, you're going to be getting out of college. How can, you, how can you continue to have sports as a part of your life? Well, there's fantasy football. So just, <laughs> but, you know, I'm gonna, I have a little brother. He's just coming into, like, varsity sports, so I'll go to him. My sister is a head coach in Minnetonka. My little sister is a swimmer. So, you know, they, they're, and my whole family is, revolves around sports, and, you know, I'll never stop watching it. And if I can help coach high school kids or speak to any high school athlete, I'm going to do that because hopefully I can tell them what not to be like. <laughs> and what to be like, And what too. to be like, Don't yeah, sell yourself don't, short. <laughs> and, just don't do this first. <laughs> well, thank you for joining us for this Fox 9 Community Connection Special. For those stories and other stories about people making a difference in our community, go to fox9.com. Also, like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter.